Good evening, I'm John Yang. In Turkey, officials are counting the votes from today's election to see if President Recep Tayyip Erdogan will continue his two-decade hold on power. The state-run news agency indicates that Erdogan may be headed for a runoff in two weeks. The election, with a unified opposition, represented the greatest political challenge yet to Erdogan's increasingly authoritarian rule. The challenger, Kemal Kilic Durulu, narrowly led Erdogan in pre-election surveys. He's a retired civil servant and ran on the promise of restoring democracy, which Erdogan had, had eroded. Some Turkish voters went to the polls today in mood for change. For me, this feels like a parting of ways. I don't know how to describe it. I can't think of a more important election. While we await the final vote count, we turn to Sonar Çaptay, who's head of the Turkish research program at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. His most recent book is A Sultan in Autumn, Erdogan Faces Turkey's Uncontainable Forces. To use your terms, what are the uncontainable forces that are driving Erdogan to a runoff tonight? I would say that economy is his Achilles heel. Erdogan has won elections until recently on a platform of strong economic growth. And uh, he's never won elections while not delivering growth. At the same time, he came pretty close to clinching victory this time. So economy was a big factor going into the elections for him. And the earthquake should have hurt his popularity. Eight agencies were nowhere to deliver aid after this devastating and sad earthquake. But his strength is his information control, or con control of information flow, rather. In the last uh, half a decade, Erdogan has eliminated autonomy of many of Turkey's institutions, from courts to foreign ministry to the central bank, with grave ramifications for country's economy, foreign policy, but also electoral boards and media. 90% uh, of the media is aligned with them, and 80% of Turkey's citizens cannot read languages other than Turkish. So he can curate reality. And in the run-up to these elections, citizens did not hear about inflation, human rights abuses, uh, uh, journalists and politicians in jail, or relief agencies that failed to provide aid after the earthquake. But Hav Erdogan has made Turkey a great military industrial power. He repeated this argument over and over in the media, given that a large majority of citizens basically read the news that he curated. So I think this is the first election won in the world, uh, Erdogan being the inventor of nativist populist politics in this century globally, the first election won on a platform of post-truth narrative, meaning you spread lies, you repeat them so much that they become reality, and you win elections based on that, and people forgot that these were lies to begin with. This election is being closely watched in Western capitals, here in Washington, in the, at the Kremlin. Why, what's at stake for those, for those parties? A lot is at stake. Turkey is the second largest military in NATO. It borders Iran, Iraq, Syria. It plays a role in the war in Ukraine. Vladimir Putin decided last year that he wanted Erdogan to win. Uh, as the economy in Turkey went into problems and hyperinflation under Erdogan, large amounts of cash was transferred from Russia to Turkey. Erdogan handed these out in the form of very generous social security benefits, uh, as well as cheap natural gas from Russia that he basically gave free to voters in run-up to elections. And I think that helped perhaps put him close to the, uh, the finishing line. Putin wants Erdogan to win because Erdogan is a like-minded leader that helps Putin challenge the U.S.-led liberal international order. So I think Putin is quite happy tonight that Erdogan did not lose. We have a runoff likely in two weeks, and Putin will continue to support Erdogan financially and through information operations because he cannot afford to see Erdogan lose when he's not winning himself in Ukraine. And tell us about the opponent he's going to face in the runoff, Kilic Dorolu. How much of his strength tonight is support for him, how much is a, 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 uh, opposition to Erdogan? Absolutely. Kılıçdaroğlu is a soft-spoken politician, opposite of Erdogan. Erdogan is a populist. He demonizes and brutalizes and cracks down on demographics unlikely to vote for him. Kılıçdaroğlu followed a campaign where he reached out across the aisle, tried to bridge Turkey's traditional left-right uh, split, him being on the left side, of course. And perhaps it worked. He was able to unite opposition forces, but he couldn't really get to, I think, the 50 percent margin. And in this regard, I think Erdogan played a really masterful game. Kılıçdaroğlu's party was supported by a pro-Kurdish faction. Erdogan branded this faction as, quote, unquote, terrorists. And as I said, post-truth narrative. If you repeat a lie enough many times, it becomes reality. I think some voters were convinced that support for Kılıçdaroğlu by this opposition Kurdish party meant support by terrorist factions. And he probably lost some support as a result of that. 
If Erdogan wins the runoff, or if it goes to the runoff and Erdogan right. wins the runoff, do you think his assault on democracy will continue? I have so far argued that Turkey is, a, you know, countries could be vegetables. I've said that Turkey is the onion. Why the analytically onion? Because it doesn't have a core. You peel it, you think you got to the core, and it's not there. So taking that analogy, I've always argued that Turkey is not an autocracy, not a democracy. It is a democracy that has fallen under an autocrat. It's trying to make a comeback. It didn't succeed quite. We'll see in the runoff what happens. If Erdogan wins again, I think Tur Turkey will become a complete autocracy. The remaining institutions that have maintained their autonomy will fall under him, the few courts and others. Uh, the last vestiges of rule of law will disappear. Um, Erdogan will become a, anointed as the country's new sultan. Educated Turks and youth will flee the country, having up any, given up any hope, that lost hope that he can be voted out. And I think that, uh, unfortunately, Turkey will descend into deeper autocracy. Sonar Chaptai, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Thank you.